Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit how I got into the project. Uh, it's really John Walter and uh, John McDonough's uh, baby. And then I came in to kind of help finish it up. Uh, John Walter couldn't make it because uh, he's dealing with some health problems. He's uh, 88, 88, 88. I think he just turned 89 years old. So, um, so he couldn't make it up here. Um, so basically, um, John Walter was a, a former chief of the Map and Geography Division at L Library of Congress. And John McDonough was uh, the historical uh, manuscript historian at the Library of Congress. Um, and they retired uh, in about uh, 1998. Um, and when they were looking through some of the materials that were being uh, used, found, they came across this one little journal um, about a, a teenage boy going, going with Commodore Perry to Japan. And as they started researching, uh, has anybody used it as primary sources, they basically found that nobody who wrote uh, biographies, uh, just topics on Perry, no one used this diary. Um, so uh, they got together uh, and um, asked uh, the NHPRC to endorse the, the project, and of course they did, which basically means they put the stamp but they wouldn't give any money to them. Uh, <laughs> so it's very nice that they, they, they gave the, the stamp of approval. Um, and they started working on it. Unfortunately, both of them are, were a little older and they started having health problems. What they really wanted to do was finish it in 2001 uh, for the, the, the anniversary. Um, uh, both of them basically kind of just went downhill. Um, uh, John Walter had both of his eyes replaced. Um, he also got a, a pacemaker. Um, and John McDonough, wh who basically died in 2009, uh, basically had the same health problems. So this project just did not go. Um, so uh, when in about 2000, well, right before John McDonough died, uh, John Walter was living near Salisbury University. And that's where I, I've been working. Um, and he approached a, a professor there asking, is there any way that could help him uh, finish the, the, this project. Um, I have a, a master's in history, master's in library science. I worked on the Thomas Edison papers in Rutgers University, which is a, a, a documentary editing project, uh, similar to, to basically these books, but we do larger scale. I also uh, work for the uh, papers of the War Department, uh, 1784 to 1800. Uh, so I was used to looking at documents, transcribing and editing it. Um, so I basically said, yeah, sure, that'd be great. Um, and I, I, as you can well see, we, we finished it up and uh, we got it published. Um, so basically, the journal itself is very interesting. It's, it's about a, a teenage boy's perspective. Uh, and because of the interesting uh, lineage that he has as well, he is part of a, a group of important people, and he tags along, and he sees a lot of the things that are going on. Um, his father, William, I say Speedin, you could say Spiden, uh, William Speedin uh, Sr. Um, was a very distinguished sa uh, sailor. He uh, was part of the Wilkes expedition. Uh, there's an island named after him. He was a, a, a purser's uh, on... Uh, on that. So when they were figuring out about this expedition to Japan, um, he got tapped to be the purser for the Mississippi. And I'll, uh, oh. so um, just let, I you probably all have seen the U.S. Mississippi, but this was the U.S.S. Mississippi. Um, and this is his father, uh, William uh, Speedon Sr. Um, so while he's a 16 year old boy, his father um, comes up to him and says, hey, do you want to go on a journey? And do you want to be uh, the purser's mate on the USS Mississippi with me? Of course, you know, 
You want to go with your dad? Sure, why not? Let's have some fun. Well, little did he know, he's going all the way across the world and, and to experience one of the most important things uh, that this nation has ever done, which is open up trade with a, such a closed society that only the Dutch were allowed to speak to them for the longest, longest time. Um, so, very cool. Uh, so basically, on November 8th, 1852, uh, from Baltimore, Maryland, after uh, President Fillmore, uh, Secretary of the Navy John P. Uh, Kennedy, and uh, the Maryland Governor Enoch Lowe gave their blessings, uh, they sailed to the, um, basically across the Atlantic. After a brief stop at Medina, they arrived at the island of St. Helena at, uh, on January 10th, 1853. And while there, he gets off the, the ship and he does a little sightseeing. As probably a lot of you know, uh, this is the, 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 the island that Napoleon uh, died. And so he walked up and it became a tourist attraction during this time period, this is 1852. You had to spend 25 cents to see the grave and 50 cents to walk through the house. So, of course, he pays. He's all excited. He has a group of his little friends. One of them actually jumps the fence, lays down on the grave to pretend he's Napoleon. The caretaker um, comes running out screaming at him and then starts telling them uh, little stories about Napoleon uh, uh, himself. How there was the f uh, fish pond where he, was, uh, he could fish. Uh, he actually walked through uh, the house, which had a billiard room, a parlor, dining room, and a bedchamber. Uh, also, there uh, was a new house that was never built, uh, never finished, uh, so he was allowed to see that. So, the first, well, basically, the, the, the interesting thing about William Speed and Jr., and I assume a lot of the, the, the sailors that were on, they are excellent artists because how of course there's pictures are just becoming uh, are, 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 are developing so you need somebody who can sketch so the top one is actually William Speeden he, he drew that and the bottom one was uh, another gentleman uh, that was with him let's see if this works oh, no oh ah. hold on a sec So, as you can see, the, the, the designs, you could really tell what the house, because I, I googled, this is the digital age, the house looks just like that. And the graveyard, it's changed a little bit, but that's what it looks like. So, after he gets back on the ship, uh, they travel down to Cape Town um, and stay there for about 10 days. Well, what do you do? He jumps off the ship and he starts going through the town of Cape, of Cape Town. During this time period, the British are fighting against um, the indigenous tribes. Um, they call them the, 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 the coffers, or, and that's basically, when I looked it up, it's the N-word for these people. So. And that's, when, when, you, when you read a little bit about the Kaffir chiefs, they're actually, this is like the worst name you could ever give an African. And this is what the, um, uh, this is what the British believe they are. So, uh, the interesting thing about this, this is actually a, a transcription, but this is, uh, I know there's a lot of words and I'll, but he, he actually describes some of the chiefs. He actually walks to a prison and he, he describes a, a, a chief, uh, Siolo. 
He's six foot one, three fourths, 35 or 36 of age, uh, a powerful, strong man, and about 200 pounds. Uh, his wife is four foot, uh, 19, very thin and puny looking. So in, this, in his diary, he's going around and he's describing what these people are looking like. Um, he has a, 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 a chief counselor who doesn't really need to be there, but he wants to be with his chief. So he actually goes to prison with him and stays with him. And his wife actually follows as well. So it's, a, it's an interesting social aspect of the Africans where if your chief's in prison, I'm going to go to prison too. So that's just an interesting, uh, back in the 1850s, uh, how it is. He also, he also tells about how the English are spending three to four million dollars to just get rid of these people. Um, and the, the interesting thing is the, the, the Africans uh, actually do a pretty good job, except that the British just have better technology and basically wait them out and then takes over South Africa, basically. So um, as he's also walking around again, he talks about the, the vegetation. Uh, there's peaches, pears, plums, uh, grapes, bananas, apples. Um, oh, he also talks about a chief, uh, Sadili, with a withered leg. Uh, if they catch him, the war will end. Uh, they're putting 500 pounds on his head. So it's, uh, he's a, a great, a grand scamp and strong effects is being made to capture him. And so he also draws what these people look like. Um, you know, Zulu fishermen, the Bushmen, a coolie, uh, Makomo is another chief that's uh, evading capture. And he actually, uh, in, in, in his diary, he actually draws the, the poster, and that's what the poster looks like. So it's, it's just fascinating how uh, he's telling what's ha happening uh, during this trip. And I didn't really, f well, I came in, um, I'm uh, American Revolutionary, uh, so colonial and, and civil war. Basically, so I'm more American history. Uh, and so this is fascinating for me because I, it, for, for anybody to really find out what's going on. This uh, African history, uh, very fascinating. T today in, the, uh, in, um, in academia, African history is being pushed to be taught. Uh, a couple of years ago it was Latin American uh, and now they're, uh, they're trying to push African history. So uh, I find this very fascinating. So as you can see, they go around the, the, the Cape uh, and they go to Mauritius and they head towards uh, China. Uh, the Mississippi uh, basically continues across the, the Indian Ocean and for a better part of a month, April 7th to May 4th, 1853, the Mississippi remains on the China coast, during which time Speedon took a side trip by fast boat up to Pearl River uh, to Canton. Um, on April 21st, uh, upon departing from the city, Speedon and his comrades had what he calls a jolly time fi uh, firing crackers and sending off rockets, uh, leading to the conviction that the Chinamen must have thought we were a, a set of demons just let loose. So then on May 23rd, after the ships were um, scrapped and, and, and painted, the squadron sails to uh, Napa in the Luchu Islands. And basically that becomes the, the headquarters uh, for Commodore Perry. Uh, trying to open up trade, you also trying to find um, uh, coal, provisions, clean water. So if 
we know we're coming from the Pacific, we want to make sure we have stopping points. Just like when they were going to the Atlantic over, you had to stop at Mauritius, you had to stop at uh, St. Helena, Cape Town, to um, fuel up, basically. So now he, they're trying to find, as you can see, they're, they're, they're scavenging around trying to find the islands that have coal because this is during the time period where our sailing ships are, although they do have um, um, uh, sails, we're now moving into steam engines and coal engines in our, in our, in our ships. So we want to make sure we, we have the fuel. So, um, so remaining through, uh, there through the uh, end of June, the crew surveyed the harbor, uh, the coastland, explored the interiors, and made and received formal and informal visits on board and on shore. By daybreak on July 2nd, cold and, and freshly provisioned, uh, the Mississippi made the final approach to Japan. The first sighting of Japan uh, came early in the morning of July 8th, and four ships proceeded up the, to the Bay of, of, of Edo, which is basically Tokyo Bay, uh, to the point opposite of the town of Uraga, where they anchored at 4.30 p.m., there is an immediate contact with the Jap Japanese. And he basically writes, as soon as the Mississippi anchored, a number of Japanese boats came alongside several of them attempting to board us. Uh, call away the first division of boarders and repelled them. They, after making a great many signs and endearing without success to put on, the bo uh, uh, on board of us the usual implications to foreigners to depart left us and went towards the shore where they must have certainly have all come to the opinion that we were a queer sort of people. The boats also clustered around Perry's Susquehanna, uh, the crew declaring it to be a custom to do so. So supposedly the Japanese, if they see a new ship that's, that's foreign, they all come running out. Now, the, the boats they were using are what they call fast boats or uh, they're, ba they're very small boats. They're, uh, so you're, you're thinking about our big, what, what we call the black ships. They're, they're massive. Well, these little tiny little boats are coming around and they're just circling us. And, and so, of course, uh, Commodore Perry looks at him and goes, <laughs> like, please, get away from me. He's, um, it, during the, the whole uh, journal, uh, Speedin actually just makes it sound like Perry is, is, is above all. Uh, and later on, uh, he, he uh, uh, when, when everything is finished, he believes that he should be the next president of the United States because of the accomplishment he did. So basically, Commodore Perry signifies that this is not an American uh, custom, and if all the boats were not away in 15 minutes, that he would not be responsible for the consequences. Speedin uh, remarks, he took the hint, they took the hint and CERN vermoosed. This visit uh, was basically the, uh, basically the beginning, uh, which lasted uh, only a few days, but basically they, they started um, posturing with each other to make arrangements so that um, Perry could deliver the president's letter of uh, opening up trade, and as well as presenting Perry's letter of, of credence uh, to make sure they know that he's uh, uh, being the, uh, he's the one that has the honor to present these letters. Uh, finally, on July 14th, Perry went ashore for the first time, and Speedin was privileged to be included as a member of the Commodore's large and regal uh, escort. They met on the sh shoreline, uh, they were met on the shoreline by the Japanese to a number of 6,000. Uh, it was an impressive scene because the Japanese were drawn up in a line along the border of the bay. 
uh, their front file exceeded over a mile. And with their banners innumer uh, innumerable and blue and uh, scarlet pennants, um, uh, presented the most beautiful appearance. When the bands from the Susquehanna and the Mississippi struck up Hail uh, Columbia, Speedin said that it made the blood thrill in his veins. After the, the ceremonials were observed and, uh, and the, the, the letter and his credentials were presented, uh, it was agreed that Perry would return in the spring for formal discussions. So Perry, uh, Perry squadron left on July 17th, calling, on, uh, calling at Na uh, Napa for several days before returning to, to Hong Kong. Over the next five months, the Mississippi remained in the Chinese coast, during which time Speedin celebrated his 18th birthday, thinking it not much of a, um, not really thinking much of it. Uh, uh, and he noted that nothing of much interest had occurred, although there was the, um, the Tappan uh, Rebellion happening nearby. Uh, during this time period, the Chinese were having uh, a little squabble, and the Americans had to basically be on alert. Um, and Perry actually uh, sent a couple of the, the, the ships to kind of help uh, um, so, but Perry remained intent to fulfill his mission, however, as soon as possible, sailed again to Japan once more by the way of Luchu. Uh, early on, uh, on the morning of February 13th, as the squadron approached Japan, Speedin was on deck and saw Mount uh, Fiji, Fuji, sorry, uh, in the distance, all covered with snow. Soon after, the, the American ships entered uh, Edo Bay, and shipboard visits from Japanese officials began anew. Uh, the Japanese emperor, in response to Fillmore's letter, uh, concluded that Jap J uh, Japan should not uh, continue bigotedly attached to the ancient laws. To do so would seem to misunderstand the spirit of age, and it was time to conform. Uh, to the necessity uh, required. Uh, the earliest discussions on board the ship, however, were basically marred with debate over which site uh, the treaty negotiations should be held. Of course, Perry wanted it in uh, basically Tokyo, wh where the emperor was. Uh, they wanted it back in, um, let me see. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, I'll get to these later. Um, but basically, um, uh, they wanted back in uh, Uraga. So basically, they, they chose um, a basically a middle section, uh, Yokohama, as going to be the, 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 the place, the, 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 what they call the reception place. Um, so I forgot to show these, but while he was in China, he sketched what some of the, 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 the Chinese looked like. Um, and then while in Luchu, he also sketched what the, the, the Luchuians uh, looked, looked as well. And so, so this is where, uh, basically, the, the, the Bay of Yido. Um, on the bottom um, is where Uraga is. And what he wanted, uh, and so what they wanted, where you see Mississippi Bay, that's where um, uh, the, the treaty is going to be signed. And as you can see, we start Americanized some of the names of, of, of places, uh, the ports, uh, the islands, um, you have American Anchorage. So. Even, even back then, we, we tried to make it our own. So, very interesting. So, so when preparations of the new site was finally completed on March 8th, Sweden was not fortunate enough to be included in the party to go ashore, 
But the chaplain on the Mississippi filled him in to all the accounts of the, the proceedings. Uh, Speedin recognized this was an important and great day. Uh, in the morning, the nine American ships took the assigned positions with their broadsides brought to bear on the shore, as you can see at the bottom. 27 uh, boats bearing 500 m members of the American Treaty Party, Marines and armed sailors and officers, as well as three bands of music headed to the beach to wait for Commodore Perry to arrive on his barge. Uh, and it was heralded also by 17 gun salute as well um, by the Macedonian. The reception, oh, and I basically blew it up so you could see a little bit more. Uh, the reception assured uh, involving the, the usual uh, flurry of, of drums and arms, the, the procession to the hall erected for the discussions and the exchange of gun salutes, the elegance of the receiving rooms and the various uh, ceremonies in the food and drink were all reported uh, to, to Speedin. Um, the first day of the conference ended in 3.30 and the Americans returned to their ships. And, and Speedin, what optimistic about the, uh, about the outcome, he basically uh, remarks, we think that the Commodore will get all that he reasonably asked for or expects at this time. Uh, they seem to show every disposition to be accommodating. And then the three sketches which grace greatly uh, enhanced the, the account of the first day's the deliberations what was the, the, the sketch. Um, this sketch of the actual conference room, which was uh, drawn by uh, Aton Portman, who was a Dutch uh, interpreter. During this time period, as I, I was saying, the Dutch were the only ones that had any communication with, um, with the Japanese. Um, and so when, when the Americans, or, or, or anyone, the British, uh, the Russians as well, the Russians at this time, I, I, should, I, I should mention, the Russians at this time were trying as well open up trade with Japan. And we were trying to beat, the, beat them at it. Um, so, um, so if you had to talk to the Japanese, you had to get a Dutch interpreter because the Japanese had a Dutch interpreter. So basically, it was a, a three-party system. And it's very interesting because how do people interpret what other people are trying to say? So I bet it took very long time, it, a very long time, it, I bet it took a very long time to have the, uh, the conversations. Uh, um, so, so basically Anton Portman um, drew this uh, where the, the Japanese are on the, the right and the Americans are on the left. Um, and you have uh, Commodore Perry, you have uh, Commander Adams, uh, Portman's in the middle, you have uh, Commodore Perry's son, uh, Oliver Perry, and you have uh, um, S.W. Williams, who was another interpreter. So uh, that's the that they were the only ones to negotiate uh, the treaty. So. On March 17th, Perry went ashore again to continue the negotiations with some high prince who recently arrived uh, from, from Yido. Another group uh, from the squadron was also ashore, busily uh, assembling some of the gifts that were uh, presented to the Jap Japanese. Uh, one, of the one of the more remarkable was a miniature railroad consisting of an engine, car, and, and, and tender and the length of a track. Uh, downstairs on the scroll, um, there, there's, uh, there's a drawing of the, uh, of the, the, the railroad track. And, and another thing that they were also setting up was a, a telegraph line. They wanted to show people, uh, the Japanese, oh, there's a new form of communication, as well as other little trinkets here and there. But um, basically, uh, Speedin, who had not seen it yet, 
but had heard of it, but it was um, basically it was a perfect piece of workmanship. So, and another noteworthy uh, event was a banquet that was on board the, the Bahattan, um, which was tendered by Perry. Uh, basically, uh, to show uh, hospitality, he brought some of the Japanese um, uh, officials to the ship, and they had a, a little party. Well, unfortunately, uh, one of the uh, Japanese officials got a little tipsy and he threw his arm around the Commodore and placed his head on his shoulder and laughed and chatted at a great rate. So it's, it's interesting to see that um, they can also let loose as well. Um, basically um, the, the, the alcohol that they used was called Old Tom which was uh, cherry uh, cordial and champagne. So if you didn't have it before, it probably really hit you. And uh, they were having a nice little time with that. Uh, so basically, uh, Speed in, uh, looks back um, and, and remarks that really the whole thing from beginning to end was no doubt a remarkable uh, situation and we hope that Americans and Japanese will soon be on a lasting terms of friendship with each other and truly believe that the new era, which is now about to take place in the history of Japanese empire, will be one that is far more greater ch change, it ch will, in which far more greater changes will occur than we have at this time any reason to anticipate and that too before many years has passed. Um, on the following day, Perry met with the, uh, with the Japanese to conclude the treaty arrangement, and on March 31st, the treaty was signed. And this is a, a drawing that the Japanese uh, uh, sketched about uh, Perry uh, during that time period. Uh, as you can see, he's Japanese now. Uh, which I bet you guys didn't know. Uh, but it's very interesting to see how, uh, and you can see downstairs as well, uh, that they, you, you like to, what well, we call it, uh, Americanize or Anglize, they Japanize um, the, the figures. So, um, so basically, on, uh, on that day, as I said before, he was very excited, and he basically said Commodore Perry should be the next president of the United States. And uh, that he, he sketched that, that was his sketch of Commodore Perry. Uh, will not all the world be astonished to hear of our success of making the treaty with ja Japan and a greater part of it to be attributed to the good and, and man management of the, uh, the commander in chief, and that he let him know that he's the candidate for presidency. So, just like war in general, uh, back in the olden days, you know, you had Grant and, and oh, even Eisenhower and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, it's, it's interesting to see that even uh, a young man th can, can think that the, uh, the Commodore can be president as well. Uh, on April 10th, uh, Perry attempted to see the forbidden city of Edo, but um, was basically um, was turned back because the officials, the Japanese officials, threatened Harry Carey if he and 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 basically what he did was he saluted the emperor instead. Um, in the days to follow, the squadron began to disperse, and um, April 18th, the the. Powhatan, with Perry aboard and the Mississippi, sailed to, to the ports uh, of uh, uh, Shimoda, uh, Shimoda and Hakodate. Uh, oh, these words are. Um, basically, those were the two ports that opened up uh, because of the treaty. And they wanted to visit it and, and make sure uh, everybody knew who we were and all that kind of stuff. Also, 
um, Perry also goes back to Luchu, the island of Luchu, and they also set up a, a compact uh, with Luchu. So in this whole situation, he opens up trade with Japan, but he also makes another port with the Luchu, Luchuians as well, which is uh, uh, very, uh, very interesting as when you look, at to, when you look to see um, what he needed to accomplish, this was kind of like a side note. You need to make sure that you wanted to uh, open up trade. Uh, on September 11th, 1854, Perry uh, basically left and he traveled overland to America, which we still don't understand why. Uh, um, he, he leaves the, the, his command and he goes across to, G to Germany, basically. He goes to, to Dresden. And the interesting thing about it, he also brings with him his flag lieutenant, uh, Silas Bent, who uh, did a lot of the, the surveys. And uh, John Walter, he's very interested about this. About a couple of months later in Germany, you see our charts pop up. And so we're trying to figure out why Germany? Why, um, we could, I could understand maybe the Dutch, uh, maybe England, but why, when he goes across, does he stop in Dresden, and all of a sudden, a couple months later, the, the charts that we, uh, and the surveys, and all that kind of stuff we did, they, they come out of Germany. So it's a very interesting thing why he went across. Uh, we're still trying to figure that out. We might do a little article to try to figure that out. So uh, it's just a, a really interesting thing. So basically, after that, uh, Speeden uh, basically heads home, uh, stops over in Hawaii. Uh, before he hits Hawaii, they go through a typhoon and basically almost wrecks the Mississippi. But they, they go to Hawaii and then they, they go to um, uh, uh, California, uh, San Francisco. He has uh, relatives there. I, uh, they were going to port anyways. The Mississippi was heading there. But then you find out that he has uh, relatives there, and he starts from November 21st to December 16th. He reports what's going on in, in California. He's going up to Sacramento. He's going to uh, up the American River, uh, where the first uh, gold rush was found. Uh, he also has a tour with uh, Thomas Larkin, who. Uh, was the U.S. Um, uh, consul to the uh, California Republic, and he prom he promoted basically back in that uh, back in the time where California was uh, they're trying to get California to be a state, but they're not. So they're basically what Texas did. They, they wanted to be a republic, but then we basically we got them to be to be statehood. Um, he wanted basically he was promoting what they called the Bear Flag uh, Revolt. Um, and he was the signer of the original California uh, Constitution. He basically has a tour with him. And it's just an interesting thing where his father, I guess, is, is so well known because of the, the Wilkes expedition that he has, he, you know, he, he's a little famous. So his son follows his father and then he meets these pretty important people uh, and explains that. Um, he basically, uh, as you can see, after that, goes around South America and heads home back to, to um, uh, oh, and I have images of, of Hawaii that um, he and a, another individual, uh, William Henney, um, uh, drew a, a Hawaiian, and also San Francisco. This was a gambling uh, house that he, he went to. Um, so basically, he, he, the Mississippi ends up in Brooklyn uh, Navy Yard. And on April 23rd, 1855, from 315 to 350, Perry visited the Mississippi for one last time, two days before it was decommissioned. Um, so that was his last time he ever saw the Mississippi. Um, Speeden, uh, 
basically returns back to China in 1856 uh, to be the, the United States Navy storekeeper at Hong Kong. Uh, for health reasons, he returns back to the United States in 1860 and then resumes his post back in 1861. Um, and then from 1870 to 1910, he's in charge of the Coastwise um, Entry and Clearance Desk in, in Brooklyn. Um, he passes away in, his, uh, in, in, in New York City, uh, August 20th, 1920, and he basically is buried in uh, Greenwood uh, Cemetery in Brooklyn. Uh, he's, I, I tried to figure it out, I think he's the second to last person to be alive uh, during this exposition. There was just one other person I could figure out. Um, so what happens is he becomes a, a spokesperson for the Perry Expedition. He writes a huge article in the uh, Japan and American uh, in 1902, that, that's basically during the time period where they're doing the celebration. Um, he also goes around New York City and talks to garden clubs, women's clubs, uh, churches on the subject of, 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 the trade, of the Treaty of Japan. He also blasts people uh, in the New York Times if people were saying bad things about Perry or the, the, the Japanese expedition. Um, as you can see, this, basically this one here, a word of protest from one who was with Perry in 1853, uh, and he wrote it to the editor of the New York Times, and then he you know, signs it at the end, a member of the Perry squadron. Uh, so basically, uh, there was an article basically saying this was, was as horrible, and he went to the defense of Perry in and, and, and America. Um, so the other interesting thing about the Speedin uh, journal is what's called pith paintings. There are over uh, 29 of them. And basically what pith paintings are, I, I can figure it out, they're like postcards, uh, Chinese postcards. Um, and the interesting thing uh, with them is they're only three by four in size and painted with what's called watercolor and what's called gouache. And when this mixture uh, mixes up, it makes it look 3D. So he has these wonderful uh, uh, postcards of China that he picked up. So you got criminals, you got the um, uh, imperial family, but you can start seeing that they all look the same. So as like postcards, there's probably one person doing the exact same thing over and over again. Um, oh, this is the imperial family again. Um, we got a Chinese painter and uh, the governor Canton and his son and daughter, but they all look the same. Um, and then a showman. Uh, and then here's some of their uh, junks and, and, and barges. And then some uh, um, scenic landscapes that they have. And the, the journal itself now is down in the Library of, Con uh, uh, the Library of Congress. And when you actually look at them, this doesn't do justice. They are so bright and brilliant, and, and they just they come right out. It's a wonderful, um, uh, just wonderful artistic uh, expression. Uh, again, um, here's warriors. Um, um, the, those are just uh, uh, beggars or craftsmen. So basically, that's, that's the Perry expedition through the eyes of uh, William Speedon Jr. So thank you very much. So, oh, go ahead. Uh, you know about the connection with Newport with this whole family? Oh, I've heard it, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, almost everybody has, has told me well, about everybody it. Everybody will let you know all about that. Anybody from mm? Kearney, Kearney Church will let you know all about Oh, yeah, no, and I found out um, a couple of months ago that, that the, the Blag, uh, Blag Ship uh, Festival, which I didn't know existed, oh. which is very cool. Uh, yeah, no. Um, I, knew, I knew he's from this area, but I didn't know how the family is like rooted here. <laughs> I did not know that, no. Uh, well, if you go there, you'll notice there are the, the plaques up on the wall for Matthew and another one for yeah. his brother. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all the rest of that, you know. No, I, 
um, Perry himself is, is, is fascinating because he's, um, well, just doing some research uh, and also reading his memoir because, you know, he makes himself bigger than, than you know, <laughs> everything. But it's just, he had a goal and he went for it and didn't care what the Japanese wanted him to do. Now, he was being a little flexible, of course, but even after he signed the treaty, because that was the whole big thing about um, uh, Tokyo, Yido, um, uh, the, the emperor, who was a very young child, uh, I think 11, 12 years old, I think, um, they didn't want the emperor to come down. So they basically said, no, 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 we don't want anybody to come to the Forbidden City. And after he signed his, his treaty, as I said, he went, you know what, I'm going to visit. And he went up there, and they, basically the, the only reason why he stopped was because they were going to try to blow him up. You know, they were going to do a suicide bombing on, on the ships. So, um, so he very nicely just saluted them. So, uh, but yeah, he was an interesting, interesting character. The treaty that was negotiated is called the Treaty of Kanagawa. I noticed you didn't uh, mention that. Oh, the, the Kanagawa. Oh, um, kind of, it, it gets um, passed over, that's why, uh, in, in the journal. I see. Yeah. Yeah, because he, uh, well, especially for the, the beginning of it, um, it's the chaplain. So the chaplain's really just talking about the festival itself and what's happening. Doesn't really, because only those five people were in the, the treaty. Now, in the book, uh, I believe I do put uh, in the appendix, uh, the, 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 the writings. Um, and that describes uh, the treaty itself? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same thing with the, the, the compact of Luchu as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, the interesting thing about um, the, the journal, which I, I didn't really talk about because there's so much to talk about, is that um, he also uh, writes kind of verbatim what the logbook is saying with the Mississippi. So if there's nothing really interesting happening, he just copies right off the logbook. You know, we saw a whale, we saw this, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's an interesting thing about the, um, um, the, the journal itself as well, is that you see uh, one person dies, one person gets injured, uh, they had to throw away three barrels of pickles because it went bad, that kind of stuff. So uh, very interesting. And then also the general orders as well, are, is in the book as well too, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Were there any lethal uh, altercations between the Perry Party and the Japanese? No, but with uh, Lu Chuians, yes. Uh, William Board. Uh, basically, I think he got drunk, tried to rape a, a, a woman, and the Lu Chuians c came out and stoned and drowned him. So, <laughs> mm. and so what happened is they find out, and Perry basically goes berserk. And he goes, you, you know, you're touching an American kind of thing. But then they find, he finds out what, ha why, why they did it, because the, the, the William Board, he got a little bad. And so, yeah, so that's the only thing that I know um, I in the journal itself. Um, interesting thing as well is um, in Luchu, there's actually uh, an American burial, uh, a graveyard, uh, because the grandson of, is it the grandson of uh, John Adams? He dies during the, um, during the trip, and he's actually buried uh, in Luchu. I'm trying to remember uh, his name, but yeah, so, but I, that's the only thing that I remember. Uh, there's another time where he sent uh, ships out because there were pirates, uh, so he sent one of the ships out to, to stop the pirates from uh, harassing people, that kind of stuff. But the only like real confrontation was was that that he mentions is William Board, yeah, and so so even with the the uh, well, the 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 compact of Luchu, they, they actually in the in the compact say you can't touch our people, if something goes wrong you have to bring them to, on board and then we deal with them our way, and if we deem that he needs to be back to the to 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 the inhabitants, then we'll do it. But you don't take the law in your own hands. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. You mentioned that Commodore Perry uh, left his, his flagship mm -hmm. and, and traveled over land. 
Yeah. And Cal, where did he, where did he start that journey? And, and, oh. Uh, and also, is there, uh, are there any writings about uh, Perry that, uh, as far as his intent in Germany, uh, was that unexplored or is it something? Uh, well, um, in his memoirs, he doesn't say anything. He just basically says he leaves. Um, and, he, and he goes uh, overboard, uh, over ground, over land. Um, but no, uh, and that's what bewildered uh, John Walter, because he, because of the, being the chief of, uh, of the maps and, and geography division, he doesn't know why Germany, months later, has these maps. Um, now, si Silas Bent it was one of the key people that did the surveys and that kind of stuff, but <laughs> why, Ger why Germany? We don't know why Germany. Uh, uh, that's, and so we'd like to look into it, yeah. Um, but now when he started his, over, his truck over land, where did, he, where did he go to and from? Oh yeah, well that's, uh, that's what I'm looking up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I forgot to, yeah. It's in the book, that's all right. Oh, read the book. <laughs> that's the right answer. Yeah, no, he goes like the, the, the Suey Canal I have it. I have it written down here. It's in an end note. Um, but yeah, yeah, no. I because I I, I figured out like wh what what was his his trip. I, I noticed the ships didn't transit in companion with each other. They just rendezvoused at various places. Unless you unless that that the major um, because most of them were going out to see about the islands, surveying all the islands around all the coastlands. Um, but when the only the only time they really got together was the the big ceremony time where they had to be broadside, so we could see you know show our strength basically. So yeah. Oh, I gotta find it. I I always like it because I because this was one that took a long time. Oh, go ahead. How many ships were and uh, leaving returns? Oh uh, well, major ones it was, it was seven. seven. Seven, but then you also had the. Uh, the store ship and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, there was the. Um, it's the Susquehanna, the the Saratoga, the um, uh, Mississippi, uh, Macedonian, uh, the pa Bohattan, and I'm missing two others. But yeah, read the book. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Structure in Japan. Not that, um, but the, the interesting thing was when, when Perry did come up and say, I want to talk to the big boss, uh, the little, um, basically the, what you call the governors, they all came out and said, we're it? And he goes, no, 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 that's not it. Uh, so he knew that there was this, this forbidden emperor that no one was supposed to see. And they actually, um, well, truthfully, well, in the book, one person comes out, says he's the big boss, and he goes, no, you're not it. So then another person comes out and says, I'm the big boss. So there was this big chain of, of the high priest, uh, uh, high prince, that they just kept going, 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 until he said, I want to see your emperor. And they said, no, you're not allowed to. So then the, the one closest, which I think it was the uncle of the emperor, he comes down and he talks to uh, Commodore Perry. So yeah. But th there's not really that much... Uh, discussion about um, well how the, the the structure is made like the fiefdoms that kind of stuff they, they don't really talk about that kind of stuff so yeah yeah I call it, it's fief I say it's not really fiefdoms but it's that kind of that's the end of the show guys. yeah yeah I'm trying to, this is going to kill me that I can't find this go ahead Dutch and Chinese. I forgot to mention the Chinese too. But no, he, he didn't have it. He, he <coughs> no, no, reverse that. Um, he did have one. But then he picked up another one in China. And that was uh, Portman. Uh, yeah. That I know of. I, I would assume, you know, there was, because you had the Dutch, you have the Chinese. So yeah. Just uh, Go ahead. thought that ran through my mind was Perry at the uh, Washington Conference of 1852. 
Because there's, I know there's a lot oh. of resentment against the British. And you asked about why. Yeah. There was a lot of resentment against the British for, you know, taking over the, the uh, prime meridian. And just guys, you can pull out that. If you can see that. Line. No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. How was the whole yeah, trip right. financed? And did Commodore Barry get individual rewards for success, or did he? Oh, I mean, he got rewarded. Um, How? Is there any record of that? Mm -mm. Uh, well, financing-wise, it's it's. This is what Fillmore wanted. So, President Phil. Well, this was even before Fillmore. Um, they were talking about this. But Fillmore, he wanted to open up trade with Japan. So it probably came from, from the president that the financing happened. Um, I'm trying to think of, um, I do not know what kind of uh, awards or uh, that kind of stuff that he got. But I assume he did. I mean. Uh, he didn't live too long afterwards. Well, yeah. Yeah. So we wouldn't have had too much time to receive too many accolades. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, to live on it. But yeah. Answer, man. Yeah. No, he, he was in bad shape. He died of cirrhosis in the river. So I did not know that. Yeah. 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 In fact, I was going to mention I was buried right over here locally in the local cemetery. Oh, okay. All of Hazard, right. Matthew. And okay. The father and the mother. Mm -mm. And yeah, who predeceased him. Oh, cool. Uh, which cemetery they were, they were buried in. Yeah, um, is that one of them? <laughs> Newport. No, yeah. Newport yeah. Cemetery. Did you, yeah. Can you, could, could you read it? Yeah. It was like the, pen, so like the peninsula. Yeah. Cirrhosis from drinking or disease? Oh, I was. Well, he stopped in Germany, remember? <laughs> <laughs> the Oktoberfest. It was Oktoberfest for the whole time. Yeah, yeah and that's, uh, yeah. No. How old was he? Oh. Oh, yeah, no. Probably. Well, not, well, back in those days, no. Yeah, on time, Portman. He goes on to, he goes back to Japan also. Mm -hmm. Liaison for the American companies over the American business and things like that. Makes a pretty big name for himself. Yeah. Um, but he was Dutch, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was a yeah. Dutch interpreter. So yeah, he Dutch interpreter. And so he did real well. So I figured Spiden might have even had a better contact when he went back. Oh, sure, you know. And also, be, and, um, uh, and just with all the, 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 the drawings and everything, a lot of them come from him. And William um, Hine, uh, those are the two big ones. Uh, they actually do, uh, during this time period, they're doing um, glass negatives. And they, they um, a lot of that stuff, uh, well, a lot of the, the glass negatives got lost, but yet the, the drawings from the glass negatives still exist. And yeah, so that's another thing. There's so, there's so much stuff. Perry getting off and going overland. Did he get off in San Francisco or was it Panama or was it what it was? Oh no, it's it's China. It's right before they go to the Pacific. Oh, what was he it? Went yeah. Across. Yeah, he went across Europe and Asia. Well, what was it? It was it was uh, Su Sunet. Yeah, the canal. So he went up really from the yeah. from like Yeah, okay, here you go. So it's uh Where's Suez Canal then? Yeah, so, well, there's no, but it's the, 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 it's the peninsula, uh, and then, and then he goes to Vienna, Dresden, Berlin, and then Holland. What page is that? Uh, 231, uh, uh, note number 22. Now, the train, <coughs> Portman was involved in the establishment of the train mm -hmm. in China, or in Japan, rather, in front of yeah. uh, Tokyo to Yokohama, so they didn't have trains or anything, for the most part. Train when when they took over that gift for the mm -hmm. emperor, that was the first introduction for that. And then Brown the University it has a website for anybody that likes to really delve around on the computer. 
Uh, if you go to their Asian studies uh, at Brown University, they have a uh, wonderful collection. They have another set of uh, the black ship scrolls like we have downstairs, mm -hmm. plus they also have a lot of photographs. And uh, you can see uh, a lot of pictures that they, they have that we don't have in our collection uh, from the uh, Anna S.K. Brown, uh, yeah, Anna S.K. Brown library over there. She has a wonderful collection of military. Is that at Hayes? Or is it it's in Hayes. Yeah. yeah, it's on the third floor of the Hayes, I think it is. So it's, it's, been, it's a beautiful collection. So if you really like to see that, so I would first say go onto the website and just Google it. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's just a phenomenal collection. Uh, MIT also has a set of the uh, scrolls. There's some out west. <laughs> Those are the ones locally. Mm -hmm. But anyway, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. And there's a lot more in the, the book that you can cover. I mean, there's, he, yeah, so if, <laughs> if you want to give me royalties. My book. My the book. And the books are on sale yeah. uh, in the bookstore. So oh, by the way. Yeah. If you'd like to run down and grab one, please do. And, uh, but no. You can have it signed up here. So thank you all for coming. And we'll see you next Thursday.